So this video is all about ray diagrams. So let's start with a spherical mirror, particularly a concave mirror. And let's draw a horizontal line. Now this horizontal line is known as the principal axis. And let's say this is the focal point. The distance between the focal point and the mirror is known as the focal length. And let's place the object outside of the focal point. So let's put it there. And so the distance between the object and the mirror, that's DO. HO is the height of the object. So let's draw a ray from the object to the mirror. And I think I went too far. Let's do that again. And then from the mirror, let's draw a line to the focal point. Now let's draw another ray from the object through the focal point to the mirror. And then it's going to bounce back and go in this direction. So where the rays intersect, that is the location of the image. And so what type of image do we have? Would you say this is a real image or a virtual image? Now, because the light rays actually converge at this point, we have a real image. And the distance between the image and the mirror is known as DI. For a spherical mirror, di is positive when the image is on the left, and it's negative when it's on the other side. And whenever di is positive, you have a real image. Now the image is inverted. As you can see, it's in the opposite direction of the object. The object is facing up, the image is facing in a downward direction. Now notice that the height of the image is greater than the height of the object. If that's the case, then the magnification, the absolute value, is greater than 1. So we have an enlarged image because it's bigger than the object. If the magnification is positive, then you have an upright image. If the magnification is negative, you have an inverted image. So the magnification has to be negative in this case because the image is inverted. Now let's look at another example using a concave mirror. So let's say this is the focal point, and this time we're going to place the object inside the focal point, that is, between the focal point and the mirror. So the first ray that I'm going to draw is going to go from the object to the mirror, and then that ray is going to bounce back towards the focal point. And then I'm going to draw an extension in this general direction. Now the center of curvature is twice, it's located at twice the focal length. So let's say if the focal length is 5, the radius of curvature will be 10. And that's where the center of curvature is located. So what I'm going to do is draw a ray that connects the object with the center of curvature. And then past the mirror, it's going to go in this general direction. Now granted, my lines are not perfectly straight, but at some point, these two, they will intersect. And so if you place the object between the mirror and the focal point, you're going to get an upright image. It's upright because it's in the same direction as the object. It's facing upward. And we can see that the image is enlarged in size. It's bigger than the object. And this image is a virtual image. For one thing, it's on the other side, so di is negative. Also, notice that the light rays appear to converge here, but they do not actually converge. The actual light rays are the solid lines. If you see like a dashed line, that's where the light rays appear to converge. So that means that we have a virtual image as opposed to a real image. Now for this example, let's use a convex mirror as opposed to a concave mirror. And so that's going to be the focal point, and here is the center of curvature. And let's place the object on that side. So we're going to draw the first ray from the object to the mirror, and then it's going to bend towards 
the focal point. Now the second ray is going to go from the object to the center of curvature. So notice that the rays appear to converge at this point. And so what we have is a virtual image. The image is upright. And notice that it's reduced in size. The image is smaller than the object. So this is the height of the image, and this is the height of the object. This is DO, and this is DI. Since DI is on the opposite side for a mirror, it's going to be negative which indicates that we have a virtual image. Since HI is less than HO, we have a reduced image. And here's some equations that you want to keep in mind that you can apply for mirrors or lenses. 1 over F is equal to 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. Now this equation is referred to as the mirror equation for mirrors, and it's also known as the thin lens equation for converging lens and diverging lens. So this is a concave mirror, and the focal length is positive. And the other spherical mirror that we talked about is the convex mirror, where the focal length is negative. Because the focal length is negative, di will always be negative. And so therefore, a convex mirror will always produce a virtual image. Now some other formulas that you need to know is that the magnification is equal to HI divided by HO. So the image height is the magnification times the height of the object. Now the magnification is also equal to negative DI over DO. And if you need to calculate the power of the lens, it's equal to 1 over F. And this is measured in diopters, which is meters to the minus 1. So if you have the focal length in centimeters, you need to convert it to meters. Now let's talk about lens. So this is a convergent lens. It's very big, so let me draw a smaller version. And here, this is a divergent lens. The focal length for a divergent lens will be negative. But for a convergent lens, the focal length is positive. And so a divergent lens will always produce a virtual image. For a convergent lens, it can produce a real image or a virtual image depending on where the object is located relative to the focal length. So let's start with a divergent lens. So let's say this is the focal point. Let's place the object here. So the first ray we're going to draw is going to go from the object to the center of the divergent lens. And then this is going to go in that direction. Now let's draw the second ray from the object through the center of the lens. So the image is located here. The rays appear to converge here, but they don't. So therefore, what we have is a virtual image. It's reduced in size, but it's upright. Now let's go over an example using a convergent lens. So let's say this is the focal length, or rather the focal point. Now let's put the object beyond the focal point. So let's draw a line from the object to the center of the lens. And then it's going to bounce towards the focal point. The second ray is going to go from the object to the focal point until it reaches the center of the lens, where it's going to change direction. And then we can draw a third ray from the object to the center. And as we can see, they're going to converge in this general region. So the image is located here. So in this example, 
we have a real image because the rays, they actually converge at this point. It's inverted. It's upside down, but it's enlarged. It's bigger than the object, or at least it looks bigger. And so those are some examples of how you can locate the image using ray diagrams. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.